Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 712 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. If I go too fast, you can always rewind and be sure to share your comments in a video response to the comments below. So we just finished up studying Ohm's Law, which um, to physicists, we, we're going to remember that it's, it's that the uh, current is equal to some, uh, some constant, the conductivity of the material times the, the force, whatever force it is, it's pushing charges around the conductor. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's think of the example of a typical um, electric current, electric circuit. So uh, he has the example where you have some battery. Um, I guess it's one of those rather large batteries. Uh, you have the two terminals there. You take one wire and hook it up to your, um, your little light. Ah, that's a terrible light. You take the other terminal and hook it up to the other side. And what happens, of course, is that you get uh, light coming out of that light. And um, the, the understanding of what's really going on is that you have some kind of current flowing through the wires and then this current is, is propelled by the force coming from this battery. You know, as, as you might be familiar, you know, there's a, there's a plus side and a minus side of the battery. There's a potential difference between those two sides. And that means that from between those two points there's some uh, electric uh, field that you know uh, points from um, one to the other, and if you connect up a conductor there, it's going to try to set it so that the potential difference between the two is zero. And of course, you know, in, now that we know that inside of conductors the electric field isn't zero, there has to be some kind of pushing or, or electric field that pushes charge along, um, and you end up with the the light. Um, there's a lot of work going on in the light that really originates from this battery. So um, a good way to think of, of well, one of the questions that comes out of this is, is why do you have um, the current flowing through this, this circuit equal at every single point? And the answer is really easy actually. Um, if, you, if you imagine like let's take, let's take a point right here, halfway down this wire, right? And so inside this point, we have some kind of current flowing in and a, and a current flowing out, right? And if the current flowing in was bigger, let's say there was more charge flowing into that point than out, you'd get an accumulation of charge. So you'd get uh, basically you know, a bunch of plus charges um, setting up there. And as we know that when you have, where you, wherever you have a charge, you have, I hope this is a different enough color, electric field that points away from that charge, okay? Now already you had an electric field that was causing the current to go through. Uh, you know, J equals sigma F. Um, and this electric field is that force that pushes the charge through. And so on the left side, this electric field, the change in the, the current increasing will cause this electric field to drop. The current will slow down on this side. And on this side, it'll add up. And so the current will increase. And it ends up that you have this nice, um, this nice system where the electric field transmits down that wire to cause the current to flow almost instantaneously along every single point. For our purposes, we can consider it instantaneous. Um, there's really not, a, you know, there's not a significant difference between that and, and you know, it's something that, that takes a while for all wire, all the parts of the wire to have the same current. So uh, when we think about the force at any part of the circuit, you know, the force between these two terminals inside the battery, the force on any part of this wire, the force across that light bulb, um, we have two different parts to think about, and I'll write it out this way. So the force is going to equal, well, sometimes you have like some kind of source or sink, um, you know, just just from whatever whatever thing is occurring at that particular point in the circuit. And then you're also going to have the electric field that is caused, that is basically in response to... Um, uh, the electric field that causes you know the current to flow instantaneously at any point along a wire. So um, when we go to integrate around the circuit, so if we go around the circuit and go bloop bloop bloop, okay, the the end result. So we take the integral, the path integral of the total force. And this is all vectors, of course. Dot dl. So the path integral there, and you know that that's going to be equal to the path integral of the static of this of the source force um, dot dl uh, plus the 
electric field, uh, DL vector, and um, what happens is the electric field, you know, any path integral, um, the total electric field throughout this loop is always going to be equal to zero. So this is always going to be equal to zero. And so what you end up with is the only force really every long, when you add a, a source force to a circuit, every point along that circuit just feels that source translated message through the electric field. And so we're going to call this guy the EMF, epsilon, uh, capital epsilon. Um, all lowercase, not uppercase. Um, so he he uh, he's not too happy with the word um, uh, EMF, and um, unfortunately he says it, it's the name that stuck. And you know I, I really don't have a problem with it. It's never really confused me. It's not a real force. It's it's uh, the thing that causes uh, the the movement of the of the the, the charge to the current. And as we're going to see that it could be a battery, it could be, you know, some electric field we put the loop in. It could also be a magnetic field or a changing magnetic field that'll cause a current to flow in a loop in a circuit. So the source of the EMF uh, could be different depending on what kind of circuit we have and what's happening around it. Um, in this case, if we consider this light bulb to be just a resistor, so let's draw out um, what a diagram of that would look like. So um, we have a battery, it goes over here and connects to a resistor. Okay. So if we had this kind of circuit where the light bulb behaves like a resistor, which more or less it does, you know, it really is just a long wire with lots of loops and it generates a lot of heat, which is where the light comes from. Um, then in this case, we find the, as you go around this loop, um, let's do this, let's write it out. So E is equal to the path integral of the total force dot DL. Okay, well, that's just, um, you know, F is, or sigma f is just the current because Ohm's law, right? Right. And so, well, what's the uh, the current everywhere is the same, so that's constant. Okay. And then we have uh, this a he introduces, which is the um, the length, I believe, of the of the resistor or the the geometric arrangement of that resistor so a sigma this is basically the the resistance um, 1 over a sigma is the resistance um, times the length of the circuit and so we can pull out the i and then we get 1 over a r dl and then he says this is just the total resistance of the circuit okay so we get this fancy equation that you know the total electromotive emotions of this circuit is uh, E equals IR. Okay, different circuits will have a different one. This is this is kind of actually this is also equal to E. This guy's also equal to E. But it just ends up the electric field is going to end up uh, throughout the loop. The electric field has to cancel to zero. Um, so anyway, um, there is um, I know that our, our electrical engineer friends like to use the crutch of, of uh, you know, the voltage of the battery equals the IR, the current times the resistance of that resistor. But for our purposes, as we go into examine what's really going on with electric fields and with magnetic fields, um, I want you to think instead about there's some force that this battery is causing to push charge, and that char those moving charges cause an electric field to to cause the next door neighbor charges to start moving, and everything moves at the same time. And you know, through here, um, there's a, a, a giant potential drop because the force has to actually push something. It can only push so much charge through so fast, you know, because of the conductance problem. And uh, so, I want you to think about forces pushing charges, and, and you'll see in the next example, as we examine motional EMF, why it's important to think of charges moving rather than, you know, the potential across the circuit. So, uh, thanks for your time. Take care. Bye.